I'd like to do a quick example describing the quantum state of one of the simplest possible quantum systems, an electron. An electron is a two-state particle. It's a spin on f particle, and that means if you measure the component of its spin along some axis, say the z-axis, that spin is going to be either plus h bar over 2 or minus h bar over 2. I hope you're familiar with the basic idea of that already. I want to focus on how we describe that in quantum mechanics. Because there are two possible values for that measurement, that tells us that quantum spin is a two-dimensional space of quantum states. This isn't the usual space of like x hat and y hat that we're used to. It's analogous, but it's not the usual thing. In particular, if I had had a spin 2 atom or something, uh, I would have found that it had nine possible states to measure, so it would have a nine-dimensional space of quantum states. We need to describe it as its own thing, quantum states. So we can use those two states, the plus and minus h bar over 2 spin z states, as a basis for this space of states. And so the plus z state we'll treat as 1, 0, a simple uh, vector there. The minus z state we'll treat as 0, 1. And we'll find that we can describe any electron state by a combination of, sort of, how is it like the plus z and how is it like the minus z. Uh, we'll get into the details as we go. So, in particular, I'm going to look at a specific example. This is my state psi. I've got an electron in state psi, or maybe I've got a box that spits out as many electrons as I want, all in state psi. And uh, psi is this two-component thing. I've got 20i, i is the square root of minus 1, the imaginary unit, 20i is the first component, and 9 minus 12i as the second component of my quantum state psi. And I'm using Dirac's Brockett notation to represent these state vectors. This straight line with an angle bracket on the right is a ket. It denotes a ket, which is the standard quantum state vector. There it is. It's a column vector. Now, one of the basic things that we need to do in doing quantum mechanical calculations is be able to relate that to an equivalent form that's a row vector instead. So instead of writing this column vector, the corresponding angle bracket vertical line, the corresponding bra, uh, bras and kets, the corresponding bra vector, I can write as it's just the transpose of this to be a row vector, but it's also a complex conjugate. So I write this as minus 20i, because complex conjugates reverse the sign of i, and then 9 plus 12i is my bra vector, and these are equivalent. There's no value to one or the other, one over the other. We usually think of the ket as the basic state, but the bra is just as good. The reason we talk about both of these is that a properly normalized quantum state has to have uh, a, has to have be have this property that it combines together to equal one. When I take the bracket, bra times ket, bracket, hey Dirac, cute, cute name, when I take the bracket of a state with itself, it has to give me one. That's a basic rule of quantum mechanics. Essentially it's because it, that's asking a question, if I start in state psi, what's the probability that I will measure it to be in state psi? Well, if I'm in state psi, I'd better be guaranteed to measure state psi. So that means the probability is 1, so this quantity squared has to equal 1, so it has to equal 1. The point is, this is our normalization condition. So is my, is my uh, state vector psi normalized? Let's look at it. Uh, the bracket of psi with psi is equal to, in our SZ representation, it's equal to the product of the two matrices, minus 20i, 9 plus 12i times the matrix 20i in the first component, 9 minus 12i in the second component. That matrix product, I multiply the first two components, so um, minus 20i times 20i, plus multiplying the second two components, 9 plus 12i times 9 minus 12i. If you've done much with complex numbers, you already see where that's going. This first one, let's see, 20 times 20 is 400. i squared is minus 1. Uh, I'll say minus 400 i squared plus 9 times 9 is 81. 9, if I do FOIL, 9 times minus 12 oh, is minus 108i. 12i times 9 is plus 108i. And then minus 144i squared. Just multiply everything out. Of course, 
I'm sure you've got some familiarity with complex numbers at this point. I squared is just minus 1. That means this is 400 plus 81. These two just cancel out. They were guaranteed to cancel out. This will always be a real number if you're doing things right. Uh, plus 0. Uh, and then I squared is minus 1 again, plus 144. They were guaranteed to all be positive. If you're doing things right, it'll all be a sum of positive terms. Uh, in fact, this is 20 squared plus 9 squared plus negative 12 squared. You can do that too. Uh, this adds up to 625. So clearly this is not equal to 1. I'll put that on here because it was such an uh, important thing to know. Uh, not equal to 1. This is not a normalized quantum state vector. So what can I do to normalize it? How can I make this a normalized vector? Well, what I really want to do, I really want to divide this by 625, right? If I could just divide it by 625, I'd be set. That would equal 1. That, that would suddenly equal 1. So somehow I need to divide all these terms by 625. Here's the way to do it. If I just take my original vector, my, my original quantum vector, and divide it by 25, because 625 is 25 squared, if I divide the original vector by, 20, by the square root of that bracket with itself, then this would also have been divided by 25, right? And when I put it together, I would have divided both of those by 25, but then that means this whole thing, this is over 25, this is over 25, and that means this whole thing is over 625, and I'm going to work it out. So in fact, my normalized quantum state vector, my normalized psi, should have been the vector 20i over 25, and then 9 over 25 minus 12 over 25i. That first one is actually 4 fifths, so maybe I'll simplify. 4 fifths i and then 9 over 25 minus 12 over 25i. That is my normalized quantum state vector. And when I do future calculations with this, that's the vector I should be using. So that's just an idea of basic things we do with this, and I'm just representing my state of this particle as a combination of the basis states, the plus z and the minus, base, minus z basis states, to make this, vec this vector representation in that basis. And we'll see later how to do things with it to do actual calculations.